Hello, in this video I'll show you how to create a Pi chart with live chart in WPF, a V chart, uh, you might also find that name. Uh, it's a good library, it's a perfectly free library to create charts and you can create something basic such as bar charts or these pie charts uh, and if you want pie chart or rather bar charts you can take a look at my previous video and just in general how to set this uh, whole live charts thing up in your WPF project uh, but it offers many different things and in this case we are looking at the pies. Okay, or in, at a donut, it's the same thing. So as you can see right here, we have our little chart, just four different numbers, 33, okay, 10, 20, and 27. You can see we have uh, the legend right here. Uh, it's called the first one T1, the second T2, 33, and T4. doesn't really matter what the name is. Uh, that is the name that is assigned. Now you see there is a hole in the middle and if I hover in it, it shows a hover effect, right? That's all that there is to it. So let's quit that and let's get into the XAML. Okay, let's get into the XAML right here. And if you're not familiar with WPF, do take a look at my WPF course. You'll get from sort of basics to even MVVM and how to handle files and all these different things. And you can read the book, which is pretty much the same as the course. So if you prefer reading, read the book. If you prefer watching, watch the course. There are exercises on Confucian Solution Learning Platform. You can submit the exercises for my review. Now, in the grid, the main thing that we have is, of course, the pie chart, and it is coming from the LDC, the live charts, and that is the pie chart. You need the pie chart for the pie chart for the donut. It's going to be the same because we kind of do have a donut uh, in here. So that wraps a couple more things, right? It wraps these two things. But if you remove these, it would still work. It would work perfectly fine. You just wouldn't have a legend, basically, uh, and this uh, data tool. You just wouldn't have those things, but it would work perfectly fine. This is just something I add in addition to that general pie chart arrangement. But the whole pie chart arrangement comes in here, in the pie chart. Okay. Then we have the legend location, bottom, kind of a, a simple thing. You, know, you, can, you can have all these uh, different options, left, right, top, bottom, right? Basic, basic stuff. The data itself comes from the series, or rather into the series, right? And it is a binding, so it's sort of MVVM style arrangement. The whole thing is kind of like that, uh, uh, just... It's just the way it is. I didn't really like it, but for some people who like the MVVM arrangement in general, this will be perfect. Because we just do binding, and this is series collection. In a way, it's a list, a C-sharp list, not exactly a C-sharp list of generic one, but it is a list of data sets. And that's what it is. Uh, we will take a look at that in C-sharp. We also have a, a click, data click method. I'll talk about that a bit later. And as you can see, we have hoverable, which is basically that hover effect, right? And we have the inner radius. The inner radius, if it's set to zero, let me just set that and we will take a look at the preview. You see right here, this makes it a pie. This is now a pie. And now I make it 50. Now it's a perfect donut, right? So that's how you sort of toggle it in a way from pint to a donut uh, and then we have the margin so the margin kind of sets the size in here so let's say I do let's say I do 80 you see it makes it smaller so the bigger the margin the smaller the whole thing is now in terms of the sizes and the design I'm not going to get into that too deep uh, you need to just play around with it to uh, do some styling it's going to depend on your own sort of grids and arrangements and uh, margins from other things uh, it's just not something I can really explain to you in sort of generic terms unfortunately in WPF it doesn't really work that way and in web development it doesn't really work with these charts all that uh, simply okay so now let's uh, let's go and take a look at the uh, C sharp 
you see we have these uh, series collection let's take a look at what it is the c sharp code is uh, once again in the window and you can find this source code as well as uh, most of the other source code for my youtube videos on patreon it's very cheap and you also get a free course or several free courses depending on the tier now right here we have series collection and right here we have it declared like that series collection series collection that's it that's all we really have and the most important thing just like with any mvvm style arrangement we need to set the data context in this case the data context is this meaning that uh, a xaml part will be able to access uh, these uh, properties of this main window class which is this window file so it will just be able to access now i hope you actually know how this works if you don't uh, take a look at my course or my book you'll sort of get a, a better understanding of the uh, data context and just the mvvm binding arrangement in general so now we can take a look at the series collection which is the most important thing now as you can see the series collection takes obviously uh, well it is a collection so it's a list and it takes items the items in this case are pi series see you create new pi series you don't have the format you don't have any of that uh, other stuff like you might have in bar charts nothing like that we just have the pi series Okay, and then we have a title, title 1, title 2, and then we have the values and we set data labels to true if you want to uh, show display data labels, right? And that's it. The value, it's kind of uh, difficult, but again, just take a look at this, copy it and use it. That's it. That's all that there is to it. So we just have to construct new chart values, observable value, right? Provide the type, observable value, and then we construct this observable value what this is is your number that is the number that you want to display for that piece of the pie it is 20 and then we have 20 rather 10 and 20 and then 27 and 33 just what you saw uh, previously in in the actual pie so uh, you just use pie series and then you use chart values and then you use observable value. That's all you really need to know. Now then, moving on, we can move into this data click. I'll show you how to uh, find the value. Okay, how to find the value on the click. So you click on one of these specific ones. Let's just launch it and take a look. Uh, you'll click on one of these specific ones and I'll show you how to find the data, which is actually rather tricky and difficult in a way. So we have that running, we have our application running. Now, if say I click on 33, see, I get a pop-up saying current value 33, and I also get the percentage. The percentage is in the parentheses. We have 33 and then 36.66666%. That is what we have, but actually finding it is very, very difficult. So the event itself is this data click event data click event it goes on the pie chart itself it's not on one of these legends tools and all these different things it goes on the pie chart itself we have a data click that's the event okay let's go back here and the event obviously it has the sender which is uh, useless in this case at least uh, i can't really think of a good use for it but what we are interested in is this chart point chart point is what we are interested in okay? and the current value the value that you put in right here in the observable value so this value in the observable value will come out as y okay it will come out as y now if you, we take a quick peek at this uh, you see there's just a lot of nonsense going on and uh, some of these uh, uh, who really knows what they mean right they would probably apply better to other types of charts and things like that uh, but it is what it is we have to use y in pi charts to get that value and if you want to get the percentage okay you need to use participation you need to use participation now it's a decimal and we want percentage so we multiply that by 100 but participation will be the decimal of the percentage that's it that's all we have and so finally let's take a look at all those uh, two tips and uh, all the other stuff the chart legend right 
uh, we have a chart legend and you can modify it. So the bullet size will be the size of that little color that is displayed. You see right here we have uh, those uh, little colors displayed. That's the bullet size. So let's do 25. Okay. It will become bigger. You see the bullets are bigger and the text block. Okay. The text block will allow you to modify the text. Series, series, series. So obviously it will change, right? Uh, so that allows you to modify the text. In this case, I only show the size, but you can do all the possible text block properties because essentially it is a text block inside this whole arrangement. It's just uh, wrapped in, but you access that text block and you can modify everything text related. So that's uh, the default legend, right? In the default legend, you do that. Uh, and then we have the data tooltip. So uh, that's for that uh, little pop-up tooltip, uh, and we just can, we can just change the uh, size. It doesn't give a preview or anything like that. So I do hope this was helpful. The source code is available on Patreon. If you want to learn about setting it up, uh, take a look at my previous video on how to use this whole live charts thing in general, how to set it up. Uh, and also take a look at my WPF course, learn how to use WPF, take a look at my other courses such as how to use TCP sockets, UDP sockets and C sharp, my Blazor course, my API development course, and uh, do subscribe to this channel. And with that said, we will conclude this video.